Well, I don't know what the hell I'm playing. This is actually recommended to me by like an IRL friend. I have no freaking clue what this game is. It's an anime game? I guess. I haven't really done any research into it, I just know that it's an anime game. I read the page on freaking Steam and that was it. Get a little bit of a weird introduction, but... I was just told that it's not what it seems like. That's all I was told, is that it's not what it seems like. We're gonna try it. I wanted to do something different, so... Who knows? Who knows? Never tried a game like this before, so this is gonna be brand spanking new to me. Oh boy. I'm just wondering if there's anything settings, window, full screen, tech speed, auto forward time, skip unseen text after choices. I don't wanna skip text. One of those games. Help file has been opened in your browser. I am so confused. What was opened in my browser? What the hell was open in my browser? I have no freaking clue. I don't see anything open up in my browser. Weird. That's weird. Okay. I have never, ever, ever, ever played this before. I have no idea what it's about. All I was told by an IRL friend is that it's just not what it seems like and that I was told that I would enjoy it. So we're gonna go ahead and try out Doki Doki Literature Club. I have no freaking clue. So obviously there's no load games here. Yeah, no load games here, so. All right. Pre please enter my name. Do I go real name or do I go streamer name? Real name or streamer? Just in case it gets creepy, let's just go streamer name so it's less creepy. How about that? Let's go less creepy. Let's go with streamer name. Hey. Okay. Oh, was it a text-based game? I have no freaking clue. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. I really hope this isn't a dating game. That girl is Sayori. Say... Sayori? Sayori. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today. It just kind of works out because you've always known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk, and I let Sayori catch up to me. Oh god, it is like super anime. <laughs> I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. 
Eh, you say it like you think it about ignoring me. That's mean, random. Alright, maybe I should have went with the real name. Now it's even creepier. <laughs> well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Uh, fine, fine. You did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you wanted to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Random, have you decided on a club to join yet? The club? Well, Jari, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? Or it's possible I did with many of our conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sarah likes to worry about too much about me, but I'm perfectly content to just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn to socialize or have any skills before college. Okay, this is heading home. This is heading home. Come on now. Don't do that to me. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a what is in a neat in a few years because you're not used to the root. I've gotta look this up. What is a neat? Not in education, employment, or training. Oh, so what you're saying is a bum. <laughs> that's, that's what you're saying is. <laughs> then why not just say bum? Oh, my word. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Uh, I'm going to start up Street Riders here, guys, real quick. So we'll just start a battle up. Uh, I don't know what to say to this so far. I don't know what to say to this so far. All right. Because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. Take a look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. But at least promise me you'll try a little. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! I don't let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her so worry much about worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of red. School day is as ordinary as ever. It's over before we know it. Yes, Doki Doki. I have no idea what this game is about. Some a friend recommended me, said it's not what you think it's going to be. And said that I would enjoy it. And I'm sitting here going, is this a dating sim? Would my friend scream with me? School day is ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. Before I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. It isn't, and you will. Oh, God. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess we have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. Thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Feel a little bit better, TRZ. 
Well, that you come to my club. Sayori. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh. Meanie. Sayori is the vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to start, help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title of Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Nat Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Eh. Don't make promises you can't keep. Can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. <laughs> okay, legit, that makes sense. That makes sense. Selling souls for cupcakes. Selling souls for cupcakes might as well. Uh, I got the way Stream Raiders is going in the background, as you can see on the top right corner, like way up there. Also, we are starting our fundraiser push for the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. So if you look down below, there will be a panel there that links you to the team link and everything else. I want to get other streamers on it as well. And we are going to raise a ton of money for NMSS, which is the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I that. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh, I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori, Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Alright, so there's obviously different ages. Sayori looks like she's like... 14, 15. You look like you're maybe 16, 17, if that. You look like you're 10. So obviously... That doesn't make sense to be like a high school then? I don't know. Seriously, you brought a boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, random. What a nice surprise. See, she looks like she's like 15, 16. Welcome to the club. All worlds is, all, all words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. It's a dating sim. It's a dating sim, isn't it? Did my friend really talk me into freaking playing a dating sim? Oh god. What are you looking at? You wanna say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. Alright, so that's Natsuki, okay. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure maybe makes me think she's probably a first year, I'll say, so she's a freshman, basically. She's also the one to make cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back towards the other girls. Anyways, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. So Natsuki, Yuri, Sayori. Don't, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. So you're the emo girl. Okay. Ah well, it's nice to meet both of you. 
That sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. Oh, so Monica. Okay, so which one's the president? Because she's the vice president. Great to see you again, Random. So she knows me. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. Oh god, this feels like high school all over again. <sighs> Having her smile at me so gently feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Random. We've made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Let's go on a red. Sorry, I get a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sierra mentioned, it's been widened so there's one space next to Monica and one spec next to Sierra. Natsuki and Yuri walk over the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table tray in hand. <laughs> I kind of figured it was going to... Okay, are you ready? Or, or what? Da da! <gasps> Natsuki lifts the foil to try to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like old cats. Now I want a cupcake. Now I want a freaking cupcake. The whiskers are drawn with icy and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears, so that's actually kind of cute. No, oh, cute! Yep. I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Eh, well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Terry grab one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Terry talks with her mouthful and has already managed to be able to get icing on her face. <laughs> you know what's terrible? You know what's terrible? She freaking reminds me of, like, a freaking, like, high school girlfriend that I dated. <laughs> like, I, I'm just, I'm scared here. I'm scared here because the fact is, is someone recommended this to me. And I'm sitting there not knowing what it is. People are telling me, oh, it's a great game. It's not what you expect it to be. You'll love it. And I'm sitting here playing this. It's like, it's a freaking dating sim. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I turn the cupcake around with my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... I haven't heard this somewhere before. Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Oh, so she's one of the, the younger, like, girls that's, like... She probably has a crush on the older guy or something like that, and then she's an ad. No. It's not like I made it for you or anything. Yeah. Uh, I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for you, you know, dummy. Yeah, she's definitely one of those girls. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places the tea, each, a teacup in front of us, each of us, before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, does not a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? It's been a long time since I've had a cup of tea. Ah, I, I guess. Yeah, don't you let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Just trying to impress you. 
So apparently there's a lot of people in the chat that know me, that have been following me with other games, that know what this game is, and that scares me. Because I hear, or I saw horror aspects. Oh, great. Yeah, that's, that's not... She's, she, she's gotta be like the emo girl. She's gotta be the emo girl. Natsuki's like the, I uh, they said first year, so the freshman that's still stuck in like the middle school stage of, I like boys, but I'm gonna pretend that I hate them. That's what it feels like. Yeah, that's not, she seems like the very preppy, like cheerleader type. And then you have Sayori who just reminds me of like my early high school girlfriend, which is terrifying. <laughs> Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean, I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So she has, like, a lot of self-confidence issues, is what it looks like. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Why? Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Okay, so she's the she's, she's the president of the club then. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet. Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decide to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, she's, she's like the cheerleader leader type. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take some time I pers something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. But I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Yeah, especially since she isn't she like super popular? It must be hard to start a new club. Yeah, I'd prefer not any spoilers. Just I've never, I've never played this. A friend did, it, like an IRL friend did, recommend it to me, saying, "Hey, you know, this is gonna be, this is something you'll really enjoy. It's not what you expect it to be. It's free on Steam. You should try it." Okay. You can put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the efforts to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. This music, though, seriously. It's so bubbly. I'm confident that we can all grow up before grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely. She's the non-popular but very bubbly type, as I said. It's, it reminds me of someone a lot. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Oh god, this is this is the this is the dating lineup now, isn't it? This game is gonna be literally choosing a girl. You guys got me to play a dating stuff. Monica must have worked really hard to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Um, it might also be the fact that there are four girls and a guy in high school. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with the level of enthusiasm about literature. Don't look behind me. You know, I have the tons of books sitting below my TV. I don't like literature. So random, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, don't have a good way of answering that. Alright, this character is not like me at all. 
McManga. All right, this character is not like me now, but it was a lot like me in high school. I muttered my quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head certainly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Oh, he's got a crush on Yuri. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Right, that kind of fits. <laughs> like, that's kind of my thing, too. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. You know, Lord of the Rings, any of the other stuff that you get into. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in a world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyways, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Alright, yeah. By the way guys, 11 minutes left in stream writers. You guys want to drop units in there? I'm going to keep you guys. It's, you guys probably aren't going to get into it very heavily tonight, though. I'm guessing it's not going to be very heavy for it tonight. Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. I've got too many horror novels over there. So. I desperately grab something I can relate to at a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. <laughs> really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... You seem like the type that gets into, like, cutesy, frilly, like... You're still the little girl at this time. Natsuki's eyes dart over me for a split second. Never mind. <laughs> That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you? Got you. Had you. Had you. Got. What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. Looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back. Fine, fine. Eh, your cupcakes, your poems. Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sari slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulder. Is that slightly creepy? That's slightly creepy. I am not cute. <laughs> Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing what? Oh my god. I'm, I'm reading what you're saying and all I hear is like... The elitist voice. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. That's what I hear when I hear your talk. Or when I see your text. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. That's, 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 like, just how she talks. 
you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel more comfortable to shut to share hers. <laughs> Not so comfortable now, are you? I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ah, I wanted to read everyone's poems. Yeah, you were just mis... I, I don't even want to call you Sayori anymore. I want to call you Bubbles. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Mm -hmm. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah, let's do it! Fucking <laughs> Sayori. Bubbles! Plus, now we have a new member. I think it'll help us get all a little bit more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Random? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we're back at the original talk of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said that I would join this club. Sierra may have convinced me to stop by, but I never had made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Random. You all... I'm defenseless against these triples. <laughs> How am I supposed to be making a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Like, dude, I, I legit feel like I'm back in high school. Jesus. That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Terry wraps her eyes around, arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, you really did scare me for a moment. You really just came for the cupcakes. I would be super pissed. <laughs> and that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Random, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Nuri, Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Random, since we're already here, you want to walk home together? That's right, Sierra and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay. With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Atsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer, closer to one of these girls. Oh my god, it is a dating sim. Alright. I'll steam the mic most of my structure of circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. I'm guessing that starts writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever, like, oh my god, it is a fruit. This music. This is legit a dating sim, isn't it? You guys are just screwing with me. It's a dating sim. We have to... Wait, what? So who are we going to try to impress, I guess? Siori, I'm sorry. Natsuki, even though I like your attitude, you're way too young. You're all too young, but you're, you're even younger. So it'll be Yuri or Sayori. What? 
Which one should we go after? Yuri or Sayori? Oh, I feel creepy for saying that. I feel legit creepy for saying that, man. Alright, how about this? I'm gonna pick a word, and whichever one it, it jumps to. We'll go with. Disoriented, unending, alone, and capable. Pick alone. Okay, we're going after Sayori. I didn't... Why, wait, why would Sayori like alone? She's so bubbly. Why would Sayori like alone? If she liked alone, she probably likes fear, right? Yep. Melancholy? Oh no, that's Yuri. Cute is obviously not Suki, so we can't do that. Loud's gotta be Sayori. Yep, that's loud, okay. Bouncy. Oh no, no, that's no! I didn't want you. That bouncy would have been Sayori. Daydream's gotta be. Yeah, there we are. Warm, clumsy, skipping, uncontrollable raindrops? Nope, that's Yuri. What the? Happiness. There we go. That's Sayori. Oh, so she... It looks like she basically likes, like, regular words. Kind of. Music? Okay. Someone said depression. It is... Oh my god, depression. Oh... Oh, say, are you got a dark side? You got a dark side, Sayori. Um, dream? Oh, that's Yuri. Doubt. Anime we already know is her. Ribbon, captive, intellectual, anime, sensation, friends. Friends would be her now. Yeah. Bubbles. I'm sorry, I gotta do it. Oh, God! No, I didn't want it to be her, but it's just, it's just my name for Sayori is Bubbles. Bubbles! Cheer? There we go. Empty. Yep. Yeah. God, you really have a dark side to you, seriously. Oh, God. Picked the wrong one. Oh man, I keep on picking the wrong ones here. Together, eternity, silly, crimson, calm, essence, unrequited. Together? Okay. Vivacious, climax, variance. Vivacious, climax. There might be something darker to this game than I thought. Waterfall, kawaii. Vitality, rose, aura. Oh god. Why would you like a waterfall? Alright, so Monica. Monica's in her face. Hey again, random. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. Nah, -ha. uh, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Random. Just because I said I was going to come back. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Alright, I'm pretty sure Natsuki hates me. 
Siri told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. Don't worry. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. I'm a little scared of Natsuki. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> That's if you find yourself stuck between Monica and Manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Phantom always gives his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. You sure you guys are just neighbors? Because that sounds like you're dating. How oh, dependable. Terry, that's because your room is always mess so messy and so distracting. And you always set your house and you almost set your house on fire once. That's so eh. You two really are good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Random can become good friends too. Um Sayori. Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation it has put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori? Eh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It, it's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sierra made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. Um, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that's me to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. I is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you, won't, if you don't want it to be. All right. Well, here. You reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. Oh, of course. She just wants to share a story. I didn't want you to feel left out. Actually kind of nice. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. Did you just call me stupid? Did she really just call me stupid? We could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick up some scheduled activities at the club. If I can just space part of this. Doesn't seem to be the case. I can. Sarah and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was want waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature-related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening to Sarah's conversation with Monica. Alright, have a good one, Jersey. We're probably going to see really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, no one will come in the first place if it's a literature event. 
but it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do this, the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Terry's taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Hmm, that's a good point. In that case, you think food will do the trick? What kind? Oh god. <laughs> you, you mentioned food in front of Sayori. She's... She seems like one of those girls that's always eating. Ah, uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! Ah, uh, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyways, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has had trouble at finding moti any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her out, get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. In my face much? I open my eyes and find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Eh, sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. Your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? I would love to have a napping club. I'm pretty sure they called it study hall in high school because we all just kind of napped in <laughs> the study club. Or study hall. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. That's over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. Eh. That's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Not, not, not every day. It's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. Please give me the benefit of the doubt. Can't even do that. Look, Sarah, it's written all over you. Eh? Terry glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look at your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh, you're on my fingertips down the side of Sari's hair trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I gotta wipe out the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. <laughs> uh, this is terrible because that character is as blunt as I am. Like, dude, that toothpaste. Come on now. Come on now. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Probably because she's waiting for her next door neighbor. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. That got creepy real quick. That got creepy really freaking quick. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Huh? Don't say that. 
You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Eh. I guess. Hey, be careful. The button just might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her tree. I feel awkward right now. Does this thing even fit you properly? Hmm. <laughs> did when I bought it. If you ever button it, you notice sooner than it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? In my blood boobs. It's, it's weird. It's weird. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway. You look so much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel, feel strange to see Sari's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Ugh. Not worth it at all. Sari hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Ew. So much better. Sari puts her arms out and twirls around. If I keep it a button, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying it's like it's a good thing? Because, if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. You take care of me better than, more than anyone else would, anyway. That's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. I'm saying all these embarrassing things. Yeah, those two are, but those two are definitely meant to be together. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Eh. Guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Maybe she can wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, sorry. But I wasn't joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Oh, we share our poems we wrote. Yay! Random, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sari still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, do you remember to write a poem last night? I, mean, I think I did. Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Eric and Monica increasingly pull, enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sari's on a wrinkled sheet of loose sleeves torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Atsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching to their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? make a difference? I mean, I kind of wrote it for Sayori, I guess? We're just gonna go from top to bottom. We're just gonna go from top to bottom. I'm definitely most comfortable with sharing with Sayori first. That makes sense, because they've been friends for so long. She's my good friend, after all. Oh my goodness. This is so good, random. Huh? I, I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori. You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Eh. Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little bit more constructive than this. Maybe even not Sugi's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh. Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. When I read your poem, not just a poem, it's a random poem. Yeah, well, that works out. And it makes it feel extra special. So because it's a random poem and it has nothing to do with anyone, like I can feel your feelings in it. Harry hugs the sheet against her chest. Your 
You're so weird, Sari. Thank you. <laughs> it's really happy that you wrote one. Reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing right in front of you in the club room. Hey, what's going on, Spike? Uh, well, of course. Not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? Like I said before, Random. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? When did you say I... When did I say I was? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sari. Not sure if Sari sees the full picture of my motive here. And again, I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her at all. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? Oh, not too much. Not too much. Just, uh... Trying to game a friend convinced me to be able to try, telling me that it wasn't what I thought it was, and it's kind of seeming like what I thought it was. Alright, I'll hold you to that, then. Yay. Now you read my poem, too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. Eh. We'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed and make me rub the sleepy from my eyes. The sleepy. Are you asking me to come out and play? Or are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? Look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> it was like, so, like, pitch perfect, and all of a sudden, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Okay. Sayori, this is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning? <laughs> No. Just just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. Still tried my best. Uh, yeah. Didn't mean to say it like it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or just how I should put it. Sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast! Alright, so... Once again... I'm 100% sure this is a dating sim now, and that someone's just messing with me. Two... This is like my 9th, 10th, and 11th grade girlfriend. To a T. To a T. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Eh. This was so much fun. Monica's is the best. Ah, uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. No, oh, she does not look happy to see me. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. Not like I said it was bad. Just didn't evoke any emotions. The base of these is not cute enough for your taste. You want to get smacked? <sighs> I'll pass. Well, anyways, I need to show you mine. Not that you like it. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. Like, the first, like, six lines are, like, basic, like, kitty cute poem. The last two lines... 
that indeed. All the things they can do, and then people can try, but that's about it. So, like, these can do all these things, but people can try to do those things, but they can't. These things all have a purpose, but yeah, that's a lot of different, a lot of different things can happen with that. Hmm. Yeah. Told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in this high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't that the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. Like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. I decided to write about it. Okay, yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense. Like I said, like all these things can do things, but the person just tries and... Yeah. Kind of eat for a kid. I understand. But the other nice thing about a simple writing is that it puts more weight on the word plan. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but it still made it fall flat on purpose. Yeah. To bring out the feeling in the last line. But you did. I guess I went more into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. He said be humor with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. I'm guessing if I show the poem to Monica, it ends the sequence. Because she's like the lead. So, I don't know. I do not know. Ah, so weird. Here he stares at the poem, and it passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, S sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Um, try and don't force yourself. I'm, I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. She really is super shy. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? Just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, uh, so it's that bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. But now that notice it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. I took Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um, it says that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing in a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Mitsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased how? Um. Well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. Fine. Not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. You mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as a rare opportunity for her. Which is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Oh, holy writing. 
ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I mean, it looks good, it sounds good. I have no freaking clue what that means. Wait, ghost under the light. The whole story is about... Like something remaining as things move on. Yeah, no clue. No clue. There, there's there's a thought process to it. You can kind of figure it out and stuff like that, but there's like lots of different things it could be. I really don't understand this character yet, though. I thought she was just like the emo character, but, but she kind of seemed hoity toity a little bit, but shy at the same time. Sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. It was kind of hard to read. What? I wasn't thinking about that at all. It took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. Actually, I think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it was short, it was really descriptive. It was. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. This is our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to dige digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost hearing? Ooh. Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Random. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Please illuminate me. I suppose you don't glance over it after all. But remember that poets have experienced their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work, yeah. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. So you feel like you're unseen? Linger in your last remaining place of comfort, and I will let go of the past. Okay. Okay. Oh, I completely forgot. Um. My friend told me one thing I needed to do. I need to go to the page for the game because I need to have the folder open. There we are. Okie dokie. Um, browse local files. There we are. So apparently I need to keep the I need to keep the folder open. Or the uh like the Doki Doki's Literature Club folder open. Wait, there's a readme file. Where is there a readme file? And why is it a Oh that's the help. That was the help thing that was supposed to open. Okay. That's why. That's why. Okay. Okay. When you're in the last place, remain place of comfort, I'm going to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. It's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Nothing really. Well, it makes me happy you think that. Just remember, it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. Guess I'll have to keep trying. Counting on you. Alright. 
So it's kind of thinking, it's, this kind of seems like what I've been thinking it was going to be a little bit. It's a dating sim. That's what it feels like, like a high school dating sim. So, show the bomb Monica. I random. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, do you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better? I'm always listening. Sorry, I'm like looking over at the folder because I was told to be able to keep an eye on the folder. Like the, the game folder. Be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. Much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? Kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Random. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. That's that sort of barrier we'll all need to learn to be able to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like this one. Makes me think of something Sayori would like. I think that's what I was going for. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? Wouldn't be surprised if you have those sort of things in common. Oh, well. Maybe good friends, but Sarah and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. Maybe there are also similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. Sounds like you two really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. Kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? Eh, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sari's writing has kind of gentle feel to it. You can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. That so she goes up and down, but she does both of them. That makes sense now. Who knew if someone could be so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little either. I'm sure, I'll end up trying different things a lot. It can take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I love to see you try doing things. That's the best way to kind of find a kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit too biased towards their own kinds of styles, but all this help you find you suits the most. Don't force yourself to write the, the way that everyone else wants you to write. Not like you'd have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh, 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 uh. Anyways, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. Sound pretty confident for someone who seems not claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. Doesn't mean that I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hold on. I had the music change for hers, but no one else's. Hold on, Wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend, I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late, my retinas. Already scorched with a permanent copy of a meaningless image. Just a little hole, it wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now. I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. What? I mean... See the direction the spackle protrudes. I'll never know I wasn't home. Alright, Monica, explain this to me, because I have no freaking clue where you're going with this. So, what do you think? Innocent poetry streaming? <laughs> kind of. I, 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 that's what it kind of seems like this is starting to turn into. I thought it was a dating sim, now it seems like a poetry thing. I think there might be, like, maybe 
like some depressive things in the background, like with like Yuri and stuff like that. But and like when I when I started up the game, it's it warned me about like this is not for like young children or people with emotional issues. So I don't know. And people constantly tell me that it's not what you think it is. So I'm kind of waiting to see where it goes. Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. It's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. Oh, so I might have been reading it at a different pace. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say I'd had some kind of epiphany recently. I've been influencing my poems a bit. Epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's just coming on kind of strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh dear freaking lord. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try hard to be able to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Actually, that's a that's a really, really good idea. Um, Back when I did like creative writing and stuff like that in high school, they used to tell you, don't think about what you're writing, just write, and then you can go back to it and make your edits and stuff like that afterwards, so that makes a lot of sense. And Red Rider Am, how you doing today? Welcome on in. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a dark puddle of it, a big dark puddle of ink. Just move your hand and go with the flow. I don't like that. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Sound like a pre recorded message? Been great resting your legs since you fell earlier. Oh my god. It makes two of us. I did that yesterday. I totally did that yesterday. Alright. I guess that's everyone. Glance around the room. A little more stressful than I anticipated. As if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing skills. Just being nice, there's no poems. No way back poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. Guess that's where I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. Eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly escape exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Yeah, I can imagine these two have like completely separate styles. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh. Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively, dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. Guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Here's this cute. Cute. You completely missed a symbolism or something. It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I I know that. I just meant language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to be able to come up with something nice to say? I'm I'm, I'm getting Natsuki just being snarky all the time, and I it's like transfer into my voice when I'm. Doing... Like, you, you think you just try to try to come up with that some nice dad say? <laughs> the snarkiness of it. Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. I was looking for suggestions of what it comes as someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. See, already liked it. And random did, too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, um, excuse
excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless I get some sort of... Unless, of course, I come across some sort of particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. <laughs> and random like my poem too, you know. Oh god. Oh god. You get my names out of your mouth. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Ow. Didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. This music. Wow. Wow. Eh? That's, that's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Random appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. And how did you know I did? he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ugh. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who poops! <laughs> Jesus. Interesting. 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 Oh, wow. I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as random started showing up. Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they noticed I was just standing there. Oh, crap. Random. She's, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. She just get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. And this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making all your poems so all convoluted for no reason? Mean should jump out to the rear, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, random. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. Ah, uh -huh. that was a joke. The only way to co convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them, not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, random? Um. Well. Oh God. How did I get dragged to this in the Thank you! It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I creep with, they'll probably think more highly of me. What? Now I gotta get myself in the middle of an argument? yourselves. Fight amongst yourselves. Fight amongst yourselves. Don't bring me into this. Fight amongst yourselves. Ah, uh, who do I choose? I'm gonna be a chicken shit. And because Sayori already tried to help out with this, and she's the vice president. Natsuki. Flares at me with a dry words out of mouth. Instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri? But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep on fighting when you know you're, ma you're making your friend feel like this? Random. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. Oh my god, I dragged Sayori into it. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I agree. It's 
It's unfair that others do inject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Yuri wants to tell Yuri about what stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. This your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes. Stop! Natsuki, Yuri. You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they simply paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because... Well... Also... Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Why? Why? I swear they just inject this into the game to be able to make it even more uncomfortable for guys who play it. Big and beautiful. It got worse. It got worse. Zeri. Zeri stands triumphantly. Oh, <laughs> Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. It seems like Sayori is the president. Monica's kind of a puppet. I'll make some tea. Sarah Yuri rushes off. Atsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things. I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing to me. Uh... Nah. Not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything, either. Well... Guess this means that Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. Might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take care, good good care of her, okay? But I'd hate to see her get herself all yourself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to not. Such a genuine person really does make a good president regardless of what she says. If only I'd get the chance to talk to her a little bit more. Okay everyone, it's about time for us to leave. How would you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Random, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you learned something from your friends, too. Maybe your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about the kind of poems everyone likes. If any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing the one of those I want to impress. I nod to those with newfound determination. Random! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Eh. Sari beams at me. Truly, it has been a while since Sarah and I spent this much time around each other. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier? Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yurt and Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. It's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, was all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Ugh. You know what, Random? Nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think you get, seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... eh... Every day is going to be so much fun. It looks like Sari still hasn't caught in the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll have to see what the future holds, Sari. I pat Sari on the shoulder. I say that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sari as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this.
We've been going at this for over an hour, and it's still kind of the same thing. Are you guys sure this is not... We're going to save here, by the way. Um, you guys sure this is not just a dating sim? Like, it, it seems like it's... Sure, they might, like, they might delve into, like, deep topics and stuff like that, but this feels purely like a dating sim. Like, purely like a dating sim. I don't know. It's... It's not what I expected, but it's still kind of what I expected. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Alright. I also think that I'm probably going to get into something else for a little bit here. Like, I... I don't know. I really don't understand the game all too much, Season. Like, I want... I'm not going to play through the whole thing in one stream. That's the thing. I'm not going to play through the whole thing in one stream. I was... Basically doing it just to be able to play through it like this, and that's all. Figure it out. I was just trying to... Trying to wrap my head around it, because people are telling me that it's different. That it's not what I expect it to be, but yet it's totally what I expect it to be. Like, it's a little bit slightly different, but it is what I expect it to be. Um... Alright, why don't we go ahead and choose the poem thing here. Let's see. Excitement, chocolate, sunny, fluffy, lust, flying, vitality, inferno, wonderful. Um. Won't be fluffy. Won't be sunny. Excitement. Yes. Okay. Um. Dance? Okay. The other two look pissed off while she looks so happy because of this. Um. Or, oh, I, why did I think horror? Oh, that's right. She said she liked horror. Damn. Um. Alone. Misery. Okay, I kind of thought that was going to be you. Why? Oh my god, there's something dark about you, Sayori. Pain? Oh god. Empty? Oh god. Seems more about like the I don't know what to do with this one. Polypop? No, that's you, damn it. Alright, so these have each got one. She's got like a majority of them. Toki Toki! See it's in there. Um Bliss? Just, oh, wrong one. Uh, broken. You like a lot of really, really bad things. Not sparkle, because that's what she said. Vacation Kawhi. I don't know what Kawhi is. Captain. Oh, wrong one. Okay, I thought Captain might have been her, because there was a lot of dark there.
Bikes keep. Okay, so that would have been Natsuki. Which is not what I was looking for. Um, Agonic. No, wrong one, damn it. Smile. Okay. So a majority, like a wide majority of it was Sailor. The only reason I'm doing Sayori is because she reminds me of, like, my early high school girlfriend. Like, back in, like, years and years and years ago, like, 9th, 10th, 11th grade, like, that was the bubbly personality with a little bit of a dark side, but bubbly personality, super friendly towards people, always got people out of trouble type thing. Was a friend of mine for years prior to that. No day passes. It's time for a club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable over time in the last couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, random. Yo, Sari. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Eh. Still not used to being in the club, and that's all. I see. It's a pretty simple thing to be able to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simplest things with you, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Can you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Eh? Not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh -huh. Why that all the Oh, she wants money. <laughs> no reason, really. How are these two not dating already, by the way? Just saying. Just saying. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, Sarah nervously retreats away, retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out of the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Uh, uh, I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How'd you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan on conveniently forget you spent all your money, you say it would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. <laughs> Good logic. So that leaves only one option. Uh, that's right, I'm supposed to keep that damn folder up. I keep on hiding the folder on accident. I don't see anything new in there, though. I don't think I see anything. No, I don't see anything new in the folder. Someone told me I need to keep the folder up. Like the in-game <coughs> folder. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice she was listening to him. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri. Tell oh, Random, let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after putting in mischievous stuff like that, your suffering is fair enough for retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, so I have to accept the revolution. Retribution? That. Well, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of us all, isn't there? Ooh, that... Why does that seem like foreshadowing? Oh, I actually got a chill. Eh. Don't let her fool you. Sarah knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me, but... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Siori. Eh. Uh, what did she just get hit by? Yeah. 
out of nowhere, something smacks Siri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What's that? Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siri glances around. Is this a miracle? Because I just paid my restitution. Alright, so she's not very smart. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> it almost did. Yeah, I don't think that's what it is. Eh. I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It's totally worth seeing your reaction, though, huh? Natsuki. It's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Terry hugs the cookie. He's just eat it. Terry rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mmm. Terry so they craps, claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, your lips look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Well, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Eh. Siri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Siri off of her. Um. Siri suddenly leads down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. <laughs> hey. Did you seriously do that? <laughs> Mouthful of Siri trots away to safety. <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Siri? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you ever heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Huh. It's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. Probably just had something to do today. Pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Probably has more desirable than all of us combined. Yeah, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the doors swing open. Oh man, I'm not used to doing reading games. This game would be like 150 times better if it had voice acting. <laughs> voice acting, please. Suddenly the door swings open. Uh. Hmm. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Oh, boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of tra lost track of time. Ah, uh, that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't, really. This kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! Did you play something for us, Monica? That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I'll get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds so cool. I also look forward to it. That's so? In that case, I won't let you down, random. She didn't want to play... Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. Really love the chance to share when I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. You would leave out Siori's mischievous escapade. The cookie biting episode. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sarah somehow finished her entire cookie. Here he's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. 
Random, random. Terry suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Get supplies? What for? Well, you know the festival is coming up. Me and Monica are gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Random to get supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'll be happy to go with him. Ah, uh, but I wanted to go. So much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Uh, okay, okay. This is a suggestion. You can find a poster of paper too, okay? Why does Monica seem like she's always trying to interject herself into things? Okay. I thought she was like out of the dude's league. Ready, Random? Yep, let's go. Sarah and I exit the club room. Follow behind Sarah hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. <laughs> Terry finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing the festival for the festival anyway? Not sure how you'd like to make an event out of literature. Eh, me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. That's all? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds... kind of dull? Random. You're not thinking about it the right way at all. Not just about reading poems, but performing them. Like you say the lines of a poem like, Between my feet, last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, resting the final joyous moment between my fingers. But what ends if I summon this joy? Now I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me, but a barren wasteland. Like that! Say, all right, well, I put this. Sure, this is me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I know, I know. This man's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Eh, don't say that, it's embarrassing. I guess it means you're doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm so excited. The festival's gonna be so much fun. Sarah spins herself in the hall in the hallway again. Here in this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. Mission? Eh. It's been a long time since I played spent time with Sori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. Nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. I kinda think that's not the case. Wait. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? Did they? Did I just get new folders in this? I thought there was less folders than this. Huh. Nothing but a ball of sunshine drying a hoppy vibes from the world around her. Pretty nostalgic feeling for me. All the years went by, I went to draw, began to hold myself up in my room one more and more. So going adventuring with Siri brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Two of us entered the classroom. Siri heads straight up to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Siri pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Siri starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Please move aside so I can look for the poster paper. I dropped one by accident. Smack. Ah! Sarah bends over and smacks her forehead right on the shelf. Yep, this definitely reminds me of someone. 
That definitely reminds me of someone. And I'm assuming someone is trying to pass a spoiler, especially since the account was created just nine minutes ago, so goodbye. Balls on the floor and the crayons spill all overlap. Ow. You okay? My forehead. Darn crushes her forehead. Yes, sir. Just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. And sir, you see on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, sir. But it hurts. Let's do it for a second. Really? Why do they have to show images like this? Sarah slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark in the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Random. I didn't find ice around this time. I guess a cold drink would do. Don't have to. I am looking like a unicorn. Even when seeing the pain, Terry makes a silly joke. Uh, what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. That's Sarah on the shoulder and run onto the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. I can't. It doesn't really matter if you use an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sarah likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In a moment, I'm already turning to the classroom where I left Sarah. She has a palm on her forehead and using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back in the box. At least they were already back in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sarah, you here? I hand Sarah the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sarah opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sarah, what are you doing? To your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. Uh, how hard did you hit your head? Sarah replaced the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. So bear with it, I'll feel, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, random. Kinda reminds you of you growing up, doesn't it? Yeah, what do you mean? You know, we used to play outside all the time. We'd always try to keep up with you. You're kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I fell behind or I had trouble climbing up on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. I would start crying really hard. Uh, and you'd rush over as quick as you could. You would trick really hard to try to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself or were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. In a way, it was my fault. I don't like it this time. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Random. I don't think you realize it, but you always... I just completely missed that. I assume she said, you're always thinking of me even after all these years. You're rushing to help me even though I'm being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. I really do this kind of thing all the time, but when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Or I'm known I'm treating you like that. This is what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Random. So glad that nothing's changed between us. I only think it'll be like this forever. Forever? I'm honest to myself. There's no telling where we'll end up for each end up for college or after that. Don't be fair to make me any promises, but, well, I hope so. Been this long already, right? Can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Terry raised a whimsical expression in her eyes. She remained silent for a moment. She's still silly and clumsy on the outside from what I see deep thought of like this. It makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. You didn't see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Terry hops to her feet. Ah. She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. I guess it's too late now. Anyways, let's go. I follow Sierra out of the classroom. Terry plays with their bangs to Bill try that bump without much success. The moment we'll make it back to the club room. 
Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was just about ready to start without sharing our poems. Hey, see where your forehead is fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead on the shelf. Well, anyway. Wow, way to show a caring spirit there, Monica. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh, I have it right. Eh? Very frantically glances around her so I forgot all the stuff! I'm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. On the poster paper, too. Uh, sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Random. Ah, well, Sayori. Don't go with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. You ready to share your poems? I guess I should grab mine. After making sure the cram box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. <sighs> There's a lot of reading in this game, man. Which makes sense, because it's a literature club! hiding these from me. I'm not hiding anything, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one, too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one that feels that way, so, eh, no way. Not even Atsuki? Well, I guess Atsuki is least likely to admit how she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. A lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? What, 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 what? Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> she almost burned down her house, yeah. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying is I can feel more feelings through you than I thought, than I kept through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. Your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. Hey! I'm not a kid, you know. You sure about that? Hmm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil, be pencil between her hands. Hey, Random. Will you give me your poem? And I want to keep it. Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. I think you might be wrong, Caesar. I don't think it's friend zone here. Eh. Terry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. I knew it did. Are you listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Stamp. Ah! I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being attentive to surround, she bumps right into me. Sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. Bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk behind his support. Knees, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Uh, let's sit down, Sari. Yeah. I grab Sari's arm and help her out the side of the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, all right, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Please, don't worry. I'm sure I like it. Some of this writing, man. Some of this writing. Okay, um... Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. What? It's a secret place where I like to keep where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put the bottle in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. 
Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering secrets, hiding in nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends took it through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up, and in come my friends. And they come such a hurry. They want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after another, pulling them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against as the tile on my feet, between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, all in shards, all over the floor. They were supposed to be for... They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, all ears echo, 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 inside my head. Cool. Um... So it kind of seems like her life is making her friends happy, but she feels like she can't do enough to be able to make them happy, or she feels like the only thing that makes her happy is making others happy, but she still feels alone, where it says they were supposed to be for my friends, but they shatter all over the floor. I've, I'm, I'm kind of thinking it's the second one. I'm kind of thinking it's the only way she makes herself happy is by making her friends happy, but she still feels alone. Holy crap. Harry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I didn't mean, expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. Almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. Thinking too hard about it. Why is it came out good and you should be proud of it? Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Brady's like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I keep writing until I die. This is the second time, like, it feels like foreshadowing when they say something like that. Something's gonna happen to her, isn't it? Like, I'm getting chills up and down my back. Like, it... And I don't know what's going on, but people say this is not what it seems like. And it's just, there's so many dark undertones to Sayori. Sayori's out of habit of getting obsessed with something, but dropping it more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in their eyes make me help be pessimistic. Oh god, that makes sense. People who are depressed or they have, um, like bipolar or anything like that, they have problems being able to focus on things and they end up dropping them and picking up something else. So, seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Nothing better happen to her, seriously. No. Hmm. Well, it's not really worse than your last one. They can't really say it's any better either. Ooh. Who what? Only thing that isn't a trainer I could take it as a win. With the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you? Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Ah, eh, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing. Maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's a something that tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her so long, you might be on the same light wavelength. But she never struck me as her type. Siri has a type all of a sudden? I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Like she's dragging around a dead weight. Oh my god, ouch. That was a little unnecessary. 
If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away and let her go over like a balloon. You'd say we take each other, care of each other in our own way. True. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every single time, every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friend starts to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if she won't, doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Alright, so Natsuki... Seems like the type that behind the scenes or down low likes people, but then pretends like she doesn't. Like she's like, oh, I like this person, but I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what this is coming off to me as. Oh, well, I like this person, but yeah. Good things. Yeah. Good things. Yeah. Doesn't matter if she has this, I'm just gonna. Yeah. That's, where, that's what it seemed like. And then she's very outspoken. That's the only thing I can really vote for that. Not bad, right? Quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with simpler... Oh, it might be because they're fight, too. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. So it might have been about the fight between her and Yuri. She might actually like Yuri on the down low as like a friend or something like that, but right now she's fighting with her, so she's showing the pissed off side. That could be it. Like anyone who would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. You know people like that? Of course, it's all about no one thinks my doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid people find out they make fun of. Oh. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what somebody likes as long as they're not hiding anyone what makes them happy. So you could replace spiders with manga. For Natsuki. People really respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. But I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want people to make people. I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too. So look forward to it. So Natsuki doesn't seem like she seems like she's warming up to me a little bit. Obviously, Sayori is there. I still don't like. I still can't get a beat on these two. Like, they they don't really interact very much with Monica, and Yuri is so freaking quiet. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Random. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Learn from you, that means a lot. Eh? It, it's nothing. Just happy to inspire, inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry if it just feels like you can't get a poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid of a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain into turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. So that goes to... Try to write down the things you see in here. There's one way to truly enable your reader to see your mind very intimate exercise. I see. Certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have uh, an example of it if you'd like to read it. Of course. 
Is the poem you wrote for today? Your nods and timidly hand to your poem. The raccoon. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing the bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I'd noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I give the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hunger curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. That seems really dark. The moon increments his phase and reflects that in much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens the eyes of my raccoon friend, I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. Raccoon has taken to following me. You'd say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me his excitement. A rush of blood, placid Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Alright, so there's, there's heavy undertones of depression in this game. I'm gonna go on a... I'm gonna go on a very, very big guess here. I'm gonna go on a very, very big guess here. Because she's very anxious all the time, and she's very shy, and she seems like she's... And it seems, this seems like this game is going to that where it's gonna take on some of the dark topics. Maybe it doesn't get that bad, it's just gonna be more about the dark topics like depression and stuff like that. Why do I have a feeling that this rush of blood, I slice the bread? Why do I have a feeling that's like herself? Why do I think that she's a cutter? Because it seems like she, it, it's, it's, they said that they write about themselves. It makes it seem like she's, she gets excited when she's cutting something. And then she goes, and I feed myself again, which is like feeding that rush that she continues talking about. I might be way off base here, but... Um... It's a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. A lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. A bit close to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express my vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure what that's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's different that people can relate in their own way. I wanted to express the way it just felt, feels to me to indulge in my more usual hobbies. Those sort of things I'm forced to keep to myself. But sometimes I enjoy writing about them. Hm, that's funny. Did not Suki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Yeah. She did? She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's right. I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. Well, that's interesting. I mean, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I suppose it's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, I haven't learned to embrace my own weirdness. I probably hate myself. Might be ranting a little bit now. I'm glad you're a good listener. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Alright, who should I show my poem to next? We will get to Monica here. Hi again, Random. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. 
Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Here, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. Alright. Pretty good. Makes me think of Siori like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you spend a lot of time with her even in the club, don't you? And again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. Not shy, it's just... I'm just teasing. I know it takes a lot of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people. Don't be afraid to give them the share of their time. You can talk to me every now and again then, too. I have a feeling she's trying to get my attention. I have a feeling she's trying to get my attention. Not like unapproachable or anything, am I? No, it's nothing like that. People getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I if I was putting any pressure on you or something. Really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way it turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... I can't read that. Is that a C? I can't read that. Epiphany? A meaningless noise. The noise that won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Save me, load me. Okay. Different? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Eh. Uh, I guess this is the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. Well, I never said that. This kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. This kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how a space or words would totally change the mode of the poem. The, the mood of the poem. The poem of the mood. It's almost like uh, magic. The way I wrote the lines makes really makes short, really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's a little hard for me to tell what it's about though. Uh, sometimes asking what a poem about isn't the right question. A poem could be as abstract as the physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your... Oh. 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 There's nothing in the folder. Are you breaking the fourth wall, Monica? Are you female Deadpool? You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tape even about writing? What am I even talking about? Uh, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What? Okay everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today if anyone would come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? Not like we can put everything together good in just a few days. Most embarrassing ourselves is to get any new members. Certain might as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah's been working on posters. I've designed some pamphlets we can work about to the event. 
Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us where we're actually going to do it for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Uh, um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Terry's putting it all on posters in case people want to prepare ahead of time. Eh. Terry has been coloring a poster and holds it up for a seat. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't already start putting out these posters, did you? Well, I did. You really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. Not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. Like, there's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagine that Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nusuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out to all to a whole room full of poor people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should be able to give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. The more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show and everyone who literature is all about. Yeah, it's all about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself. Weird choice of words. Finding new horizons and having fun. That's right. It's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? Inspire them feeling the same brain as brought you in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. All it takes is staying in front of the room for two minutes and reciting the poem. And I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. At least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Ooh. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances at everyone else's expected faces. I guess I really don't have a choice. Ah, uh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh my god, quit with the foreshadowing. Seriously. Oh. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way. Monica. This is just too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, then how do you know expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start after that. I'll help everyone feel a little more comfortable. I go next? Ah, uh, of course. Now let's see. Michael flew through an airport just to perform she has mine for herself. She stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica made sense reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. Her reflection is pristine. Knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? Nice around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sari looks amazed. There is an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica fishes the recitation. Reciting. I wouldn't say this finishes reciting the poem, it's a recitation. Okay, the four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Uh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. You ready to go next, Yuri? Uh, uh, I'll go next. Uh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. The poem's called. Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she was practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting so much effort? Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens to Yuri when she gets absorbed into books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and structures that she enunciates with perfect timing. Must be a rare glimpse of the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed within her inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. 
Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the palm to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, it's him up next time. Terry hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh, uh, sorry, I giggled. Hey, thank you for that follow, Core Dragon. Welcome to your home. Cheers, my friend. Eh. They are in. But harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Uh, I have to think about it like you're reciting it to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. Your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see, I see. Okay then. Here begin to poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made a perfect match. Home isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone that I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Eh, even Random liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? Emo nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. It might just be that other poems don't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Uh, I really don't understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that were sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. Might need a little bit more force behind them, depending upon what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. Lots have been practicing that kind of thing. Just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Eh. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We won't have much time before the festival, you know. But okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before random. Not like it compared to you guys, anyway. Might as well let random lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to... Oh, fuck you too, Natsuki. Seriously. Gee, it is. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and stand in front of the podium. Everyone had their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put a centered energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive the whole pause anyway. Sorry, I'm really not as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Something I'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. It just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Mm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reading the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. It wasn't bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Well, you're going to be doing it again for the festival. You at least feel prepared back to be able to recite a poem in front of other people. I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put up whatever face I want for other people. Oh, it's just my friends. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. Might be hard, but I hope we all also have an idea of what it is like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before festival, okay? We'll make it pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Please. Probably find some other poem to recite instead. 
That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. Melody present surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me feel really happy. Yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. Now the festival's coming up. Let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. For the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sori and Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. For the sake of the club, and pressing Monica. I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! You two two always going home together like that. Kind of adorable, isn't it? Eh. He is, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Random. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. Walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori has been a little bit quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to. I mean, Sayori fumbles with their own words. Does this say one day Yuri asked to walk home with you? Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. <laughs> Alright, so Yuri's not here. And the connection's been with Sayori this whole time, and obviously she's feeling... unconfident about her friendship or something like that. So I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori, really think I would ditch you for Yuri. Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, he always seems to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Random. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve what she wanted, so... Yuri, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure it out sometimes. I'm sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. Kind of weird for Sayori to carry so much about. But I just want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen that time. All right. I think that is enough of that for today. Um, my voice is killing me. It has been, it has been two and a half hours of reading this. My voice is destroying me right now. Like it's dry. It's, that's a lot of reading. That's a lot of reading, which is fine with me, but normally I read. Not allowed. Not used to it like that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just save it here, and I'll load up from that later. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, I still got 10 minutes left on streamers. Let's go ahead and figure out. I'm gonna switch over to Dissidia here. Doesn't look like there's anything new in the folder here. Yep. I'm just gonna go ahead and switch over there. So we will come back to this.